He's wearing a nice orange yellow shirt. Is that orange yellow? It's orange. Welcome to the completely unnecessary podcast for Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. Alongside clicking Ian Ferguson. Tap the tap those buttons, Ian. I'm Pat Contry. On the show today, we're gonna be talking about. Couldn't do that before the podcast. We'll be talking about heritage auction results that I barely was made aware of. You know, I don't know. It almost slipped past my radar about a record selling, multiple record selling high prices that at was, auction. That was one hell of an attempt at sarcasm, Patrick. Um, <clears throat> we'll also be talking about uh, in television and a Nintendo Life article and accusations made directly against us. And Patreon poll topic and voice messages. Ian, how is your weekend, your weekend update? It was lovely. I had a uh, surf in California. (sighs) It's going to be a soundboard heavy day. Brevity. Um, Had a surf in California burrito yesterday from Lucha Libre Taco. A surf in California. California. What makes it surf? They throw shrimp in? Shrimp, steak, fries. Well, it's usually carne asada. Chipotle sauce. But they throw this. Fresh avocado. Just whole hunks of fresh avocado. Oh, yeah, it's really good. I like Lucha Libre. I don't think everything they do there is the best. Some people seem to think they're overrated. It's funny. It's one of those places that when they first came to San Diego and opened up, it was the talk of the town. And then like four years later, it's the place that's popular to be like, oh, it's not that good. It's good. Like Hodad's? Uh, Hodad's is really not. I mean, even it's from fa- my f- it's fast food. Hodad's is fine. It, it's it's not it's not the best burger you're ever going to eat. That's down the street. Um. But the uh, surf in California that they do at Lucha Libre is is stupendous. Um, it's colossal. It's terrific. It's very big. It's colossal. It's terrific. It's stupendous. Um, also did a little record shopping. Oh. Did quite a bit of crocheting. And uh, we saw an old pal. An old friend. We saw an old pal. Like he's Yoda dying in, in Return of the Jedi. Our, our buddy John D. Uh, John D. Former co-head of RetroWare. Co-director and producer of Video Game Years, avid whiskey aficionado, John D. Yeah. I hadn't seen John in th- at least three years. I talked to John um, online back and oh, forth every once in a while, but I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen him in person probably since 2014, so. Oh, yeah, we talk, well, we talk, about, we talk about, you know, Video Game Years biz- business, and uh, we, 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 we talk about it one every two or three weeks, but it's good seeing a person face-to-face. Yes. Commiserating. Mm-hmm. We got, we got some nice uh, fish tacos, some some spectacular nachos, some of the best nachos you'll ever have in your life. Uh, and it was great. We didn't get a picture of it, though. We got a picture of the nachos. I guess that was more important. We didn't get a picture with John. I that yeah. Was, I was like, ah, whatever. We take too many pictures in the social media age. No one's going to watch all these pictures. That's for the aliens to analyze our culture when we're gone. When we vaporize ourselves. Like, oh, how these people live through. Everyone took billions of pictures of their life. You know, it's ridiculous. Used to be, used to be when we were kids. And back in my day, we took pictures like three times a year. That's yeah, all it was. Take them on Christmas, birthdays, some some family gatherings. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. Your life's and I not managed that important. to avoid the camera, which is why there's like no pictures of me during my high school years. <laughs> Our lives aren't that important to be recording every single day, every meal. Every they're not. Yeah, it's a waste. Pictures of me. It's like a bunch of pictures of me as a baby and a child, and then. Maybe <laughs> there's like two, maybe 30 pictures in total from my like ages five to iPhone, and then, then iPhone is a billion, and then iPhone a billion afterwards. Yeah, and you never see those pictures again. It's like having it's like having you know a Raspberry Pi with a billion games. You're but, never gonna play like more than one percent of it. It's them. why I get so pissed yeah. when like people pull out their phones to take like videos of fireworks or to like instead of or, watching it or to catch 30 seconds of like a band at a concert. No one, you're not gonna watch that. No. I promise you, none of your friends want to see it. No. You're doing it because you're you're like you, you, some fear of missing out. But yeah. fucking put the phone down and enjoy it. They've you, done studies that you have say, memories. They've done studies that say people who are focused on recording it more remember less of the actual. I believe event. that because it's like a weird filter, and you're like looking. Yeah. through. you're not 
concentrating on the event. You're not itself. experiencing it. Yeah. You're concentrating on recording the event. It's like you're taking yourself, you're like separating yourself from the event by recording it. It's really weird. And that's why I, whenever I do an event, I try to do that. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll shoot a little bit of something, but like for fireworks, I just want to see the sky. I don't want to watch it through a fucking little little screen. If I'm seeing a band, like if they've got a cool stage set up, I might try to get like one or two quick pictures of it. But recording, ask yourself this when you're recording these videos. Who's going to watch it? Who do you think actually wants to watch it? Are you ever going to watch no. it? Have you ever watched no. them? Then put your phone back in your no. fucking pocket. When I went to the Padres game, I, I think I took like a couple of pictures when I first got there. Then I put my phone away and just watched the best picture potentially the past 50 years play and I immersed myself in the environment phone. I use my phone to order food to my seat. That was it. That's, that's all I did. Well, what are we talking about? We're old men. Yes. Yeah, so that, that was a weekend. Yeah. Weekend. Do uh, you do anything else? Playing you do any gaming? Freaking weekend. Uh, did I do any gaming? Um, no. Okay. No, did a lot. Oh no. I did a lot of crochet this weekend. That's oh. what I did. That's what I did. Okay. We're working on like a hoodie. Crocheted hoodie. Working on a project for Vani, and I just finished up a, a project for uh, two friends that we know, actually. That we both know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I'm trying to think if I did anything else. I think I watched some TV, caught up on sleep as much as I could. Um, I was a little worn out. Um, yeah. Edited a few N64 stuff. I, I have two N64 games left to play on my list, my allotment. Again, I'm not the one doing all that I'm doing about... Uh, between five and six percent of the game reviews for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad, Ian. I like I like the the pastel, the neon pastel looking sore away. Uh, yeah, that's what I did this weekend, and you know, trying to try to stay in a what is it, the hot guy summer shape? Trying to try hot guy to, summer, hot guy summer. Uh, what is gonna be schlubby sh guy summer? That's <laughs> that would have helped me in the past. Um. I want to talk about this woman's I giant do. handheld collection. Yes. Um, so uh, this is from the uh, article at Kotaku. Black woman gets two world records for her vast vintage gaming collection. Um, I saw this going around, and that's that's very cool. Um, I, I don't honestly pay a whole lot of attention to Guinness oh, World Records. Puck Monster. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's I thought that said something else, <laughs> that's too. Why they, that's, that's why they changed it. That's why they changed Punk Man. Uh, Puck Man. Yeah. Um, but this is this is pretty big for two reasons. One, you don't often see a lot of black women in the gaming space, so it's always nice to see um, that, especially such an impressive collection. But it's not just saying just vast vintage gaming collection is, I think, a little uh, it doesn't really highlight what it is. It's mostly old LCD and LED handheld games from um, the 70s and 80s. Um, and I think into the 90s as well. But this particularly interests me because this is the shit that I love so much. So this is like um, the Mattel uh, sports games. This is the old like Epoch, you know, uh, VFD Pac-Man games. Sure. Um, there's, there's a tabletop Coleco ones on the shelf there. Yep. The woman's name is uh, Linda uh, Guillory. Um, and she uh, now holds two records uh, for holding for owning 1,599 LCD gaming systems and 2,430 playable gaming systems. Oh, she has Ring King Data East in, in the package. I know they had one. Um, the uh, okay. 2,430 playable gaming systems includes the LCD games uh, and other LC uh, handheld standalone games. Um, it talks about how she got into it. Um, how she found um, a uh, conic uh, basketball game. Uh, it was broken in 1979. So when she was a kid, she took it apart and fixed it so she oh, could play it. Good for her. Um, and she recent, and then she got into the actual like hardcore collecting because she was talking to her brother over about um, who was better at the Coleco tabletop. Pac-Man machine and it caused her to go out and buy one to see if she was still any good at it and the the rest followed. Oh. So mm -hmm. that's very cool. I I'm 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 happy to see it and it's it's a really I like it because it's a unique interesting collection. A lot of uh, times when we get this news on these collections, these Guinness Book of World Records, you know, someone with the most games in the world, it's because they padded it out with we shovelware, you know, and Garbage stuff like that. No that one cares we, we've about. seen that a lot of times. People who are buying the ninety-nine cent sports games, you know, and and using that to pad out their collection. And I, it's not to sound rude, but that's not interesting to me. You're literally just trying to get a number so you can say you've got a number. You're not collecting 
stuff i i don't believe that you're collecting the stuff that you want to you're not curating an interesting collection um this is an example of doing that and i think it's very cool uh, she even has I, I i get impressed by the boxed handhelds like fi finding the boxes she has I, let's see the burger time handheld there she's got there in the box it looks like there's a pengo one um she also has like nes games on the shelf so she collects other stuff obviously she has she has a uh, like Mario merchandise, some of the weird stuff they put out that you, it's harder to find. So, uh, there's like a Qbert looking like trash can on her shelf. So she's obviously into other stuff here. She has, but she has the watches all displayed nicely. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, obviously, it harkens back to uh, good old uh, Charles from PRGE, as he was the main handheld person I ever knew. He, I, I can't imagine how many games he had. He sold them. He sold them all off though. I one year I bought like forty from him. You know. So, like, there's not many people out here that are into this stuff, that, to this extent. There's a, what's that King Kong one? That looks interesting. Yeah, it, it's interesting because it, it's like, these were toys to people. So, it, it, even though they're, like, primarily toys, but also, I guess, video games to an extent. So, they're not covered as much as traditional video games, like the handhelds. But, I, but yeah, Ian likes them. I like them. Um, so, yeah, check out the article. Check out the article here. And, uh... KO boxing, yeah, I didn't hear. I haven't heard of some of these. This is incredible. But anyone that you stuck out from the video that you watched, that like, okay, that's a cool one. I'd want to have her. I, it's it's all cool to me. I really like seeing that stuff just in the boxes and stuff like that. Does she have, is that Game Boy games on the shelf as well, or just NES? I try, kind of hard. I think it's just NES. She has boxed NES games on the shelf. She has like like a Super Nintendo sign, so she's into she's into this stuff. Obviously, God, I love I love I love some of this stuff. The early '80s uh, stuff, the weird company stuff. You know? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, this is an interesting little thing that came to our attention from uh, good old Daniel Winter Island Studios. If by uh, interesting, uh, you mean disgusting and well, gross. Okay. Uh, player one, uh, W-O-N, uh, player one, uh, stupid name, um, is a... Basically, it's a program that's going to allow marketers to be able to start running video ads within console and uh pc games um i guess it's, it, it's it's an interesting idea depending on where it's used but I, I still don't like how ads are just absolutely permeating everything that we think we've purchased and owned um goes back to we didn't talk about it on here but you know a few weeks ago there was uh discussion about how the oculus rift or the oculus quest is going to start having ads even though it's a paid for product to sure. be in the fucking whatever um so this is something that allows ads to be streamed during gameplay but unlike an ad just being streamed say on a billboard or something in the game um this is going to give players the option to watch like a 10 or 15 second ad um it, to gain something in game um Simul Media, the creators of this program, have struck deals with Electronic Arts, uh, Tencent, High Res Studios, um, and you know, so this would be able to, like I said, uh, who knows how this will be used? But for instance, you could watch a few ads in Madden and get coins to put towards Ultimate Team Packs or, or okay. something like that. That's giving you some reward for, you know. Um, my problem is it's still invasive if you have to constantly be like no i don't want to watch this ad no i don't want to watch this ad uh, yeah i only understand that when it's like free to play game yeah if it's, it's like, a free yeah, to play game it. i get it but if it's money. a game that i've actually paid for yeah there charity. are some people who are going to be fine with it in the terms of madden if it means like i said getting them you know if it discounts them you know packs or something what if but I don't care? to me yeah, yeah exactly if, if you don't care um it's just annoying and it's going to push people away uh, especially a lot of these sports games where they just seem like they're constantly asking you say, for your money at all times. You say push people away, but like there was a time when people used to boo at the movie theater commercials. They, they oh, I know commercials before trailers. I know that I was I was like, alive like twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, when they started doing that. People would boo those. Yeah, but then it's like you're used to it. Now they run like run ads up until the trailers. Like they make their money. They run like ten minutes of ads, then you get the trailers. Your movie doesn't start till like twenty minutes after the actual time start time. I always bring this up to just kind of. Uh, cast in a light how how quickly this all changed but i remember 
in 2008 when Street Fighter 4 got released, I remember the absolute uproar and pushback when they announced they were releasing their first downloadable costumes pack. People are yeah. like, this is fucking stupid. This is the stuff that used to be available for free in games yep. when you were good enough to unlock it, et cetera, et cetera. And agreed. But even within a couple of years, that was just common. And now no one no one says anything. It's it's just it's it's what it is. If you did it, if your fighting game didn't have downloadable costume packs, people would ask people you what the fuck strange. you were doing. Right. Yeah, it's a new revenue stream. Uh, games as a service, Ian. We can thank Capcom and that's that's even a little different. Well, that's like your destiny and your stuff like that, where it's sure. basically an online service that you're subscribing. Yeah, to. it's it's really it's really more uh, that was more probably smartphone games and free to play games and smartphones and consoles are like, why don't we have models like that where you're constantly giving us a little bit of cash all the time? And it works. That's the reason why Rockstar ain't rushing to get out GTA Six anytime soon. What the hell rush do they have? You yeah, know what I mean. Did they announced, I think I saw something like 2026 it's coming out. It's like, like that'll be how much years in between? Like 16, my, my understanding is there years has, in between games? And I think even that's just still speculation because my understanding is there has not been an official announcement on Grand Theft Auto 6. I could be But wrong. a game like that takes like four years to make though. So like whenever they announce they're starting to work on it, you're not going to see it for years and years. Right. So yeah, it's a brave new world, Dean. What are you going to, what are you going to, what are you going to do, right? Um, well, you can always head over to ultimatenintendo.com. If you're feeling down about games as a service, uh, where you purchase things directly, no service here, but but good items like books, NES and Super Nintendo guidebooks, enamel pins, T-shirts, RBI baseball stickers. I got an offer recently from someone. And this isn't the push it. Someone inquired about buying the entire roll, and I'm like, dude, I can't do that just because I don't know how many are there, and I un I can't put put the you know. I can't put the toothpaste back in the in the cap. I can't unroll that and roll it back up easily. No, so I'm I sorry, do and I I don't want to make judgments on this person. But anyone who's like that eager to do it, I think smells money and thinks they're gonna do something with it. Like, no, what can you do with those? Ian? I don't know, but people are trying to fucking scheme and game things all the time. Then a water grade, no. water grade my labels. No, you don't need a whole roll of stickers. Hey. Pat doesn't need the whole roll of hey, stickers. Hey, I'm still negotiating with some point, so let's let's go easy on my potential customer here. But but we might work out a deal for some. Not I'm not getting rid of the whole roll because again, I can't count them. There could be a thousand on here, eight hundred, two thousand. I have no idea. I sold 150 and it did not make a dent. It made like that much dent to 150. It's the same size practically. It's amazing. But anyway, that's at ultimateintendo.com. I'm also going to be on <laughs> on Twitch Wednesday. Uh, Twitch.tv slash country code. We watch 80s commercials. Ian shows up every seven months and says hi in it. We love him for it. Um, but we, we, we... Showing up once was a mistake. Why was it a mistake? Because <laughs> now I'm going to hear about the one time I showed yeah, that's up. That's right, Ian. Some the no times I that's showed right. up. Um, and then I'm on Cameo, cameo.com slash Pat Country for all your um, roasting and birthday and wedding anniversary needs. No, uh, no breakups yet. Have not done a breakup. For all your foot needs, what? Your foot? No, stuff. no, I'm not. No, we're not getting to that. That, that, yeah, no. no don't ask for f foot pictures. I saw, I saw a Twitter, a, a Twitter post the other day that made me no. think of you because someone was just like, "Why is it whenever someone has a fetish and they request something, they always frame it as a joke?" <laughs> because <laughs> like, yeah, that's how you always know that it's a fetish thing, though. If someone tries to ask you to do something weird and they're overly leaning into the ha ha, it's for a joke. No, it's because they want to jerk off to it. No, I, I well, I, well, yeah, I guess women can jerk up as well in this case, um, in in a way, but um, I don't mind it, but that's not the platform for it. That's the whole point. It's like I'm not advertising it. I'm not advertising that. If I'm advertising it, yes, you ask me, but that's not the platform. No, you don't, you don't do it on. That's what I'm getting. At. You don't do it on Cameo. It's not that's, a sexual platform. It's not what it's for. You know, but OnlyFans coming soon. As soon as I, well, I put on five pounds. I think due to the protein from. Uh, just take it off and take the pictures, Pat. You want me to do that in the pictures, Ian? No. What What if one day you woke up and all of a sudden I had, had without telling you, I didn't tell you, I had just a fucking naked, nude, sexual OnlyFans. What would honestly be your reaction? Would you say I went off the deep end? Would you support me? What would you do? 
I, I I'm have, actually curious. I have good friends who have done porn multiple times. I would not give a shit. But you do a podcast with me, so like, would 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 that affect you, or you wouldn't? I would not. You go, care. you go, you go, boy. Would you say that? I I do not care. Oh no, I have friends that on OnlyFans. You know, like I'm just saying, for me, would it be a weird dynamic between us going forward if you know, like, I was sticking bananas in myself or whatever? I'm not uh, saying I do that, but no. Okay. That 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 inches me towards that line a little. That Ian's okay with it, you know. I I really don't care what you do. As you don't care as what it's, I do. Uh, not illegal. Okay. You don't yeah. want me to harm not, myself. Not though. hurting anyone. Not hurting yourself. You don't want me to be like a cutter, like that sort of sexual dance. If you wanna, if you wanna do a banana, do a banana. I think banana would be doing me technically. <laughs> you can change the roles. <laughs> With that fruit, you're not doing that fruit. It's hard to do that fruit. Okay. Sexual freedom. All right, Cubert replicate. <laughs> um, we'll go. I didn't want to necessarily talk about this, uh, but then I did. Uh, <laughs> Pat put it on here, and we we're like, "Should we These cut ones, things?" And I need like, to be able to talk about my potential OnlyFans. And Pat was like, "We could probably cut this." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, we could probably cut this." But and then, then I read reading. about it, and I wanted to bring it up. I wanted to bring it up because these, uh, the so this is um, the same company that did the uh, Dragon's Lair replicate that we talked about. New Wave Toys. The replicate is the line. They are what one six size? I forget. One sixth. So they're like um, a foot. So I really liked the uh, Dragon's Lair one, and what I liked about it most was the weird attention to detail, the fake laser disc player that was in the back, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. also they recreated the um, the unique scoreboard that's on Dragon's Lair. Um, but so the Cubert one, I, I feel like bringing it up just because they really went all out for this too. So there's two versions that they're offering: uh, the standard Cubert. And uh, then the um, Warren Davis edition. Warren Davis is the guy who made Cubert. Uh, and the Warren Davis edition uh, looks similar, but it, it, it's it's the prototype version. It's the one that apparently he still has in his house. Oh, it's wow. got different, uh, slightly more generic um, side art. And the marquee uh, looks like the side art on the original. So instead of saying Cubert across the front of it, it has the, you know, uh, the, the Cubert voice no, 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 swear no, 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 no. with the swirls and the exclamation. Points yeah, right. and stuff like that. Yeah, right. um, so that's cool. It also comes with um, the fatter, fatter, <laughs> PHAT? Faster, harder, <laughs> more challenging Cubert, which was what? apparently an unreleased sequel that Warren Davis himself made. Warren, are you a madman? More challenging. So I was actually going to bring that up. I feel like uh, Cubert is plenty freaking challenging in and of itself. However, I've watched plenty of people who are good at Cubert, including my best friend growing up's mother. Mm hmm. And they just play it like, uh, I, I, it must you get be, into it. It must be get, one of those games where if you figure out yeah, the patterns and stuff like that, it, there's a rhythm I, and it's much easier. I've never gotten to the point where I've learned the rhythm. So I, I understand. I've definitely seen people who can sleepwalk. Let's put, through let's put it this way. I think it's easier to get good at that, a game like that versus Pac-Man uh, because a game like this, you can, it, it's, it's, it's not memorizing keys. You can react to how the enemies are. And if you put a gun into my head, I can probably, on one quarter, get to, like, the fifth stage of Qbert. You know, I, I can't probably get to the fifth stage of Pac-Man. You know, oh, see, it's very different. I can get to the fifth oh, okay. stage of Pac-Man. I can't get to the fifth stage of okay. Qbert. So not Qbert, a chance in hell. Qbert appeals to me more than that, uh, that than... Than Pac-Man, but uh, but it's but once but you once you get into like oh you got to change these fucking cubes three or four times then it's like holy shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the main thing I wanted to bring up is in the original Cubert arcade machine, uh, and I if you if when you die if you fall in the original run, um, if you fall there's a a knocker. So knockers, um, this was made by Gottlieb. Gottlieb makes a lot of pinball machines. Knockers are common in pinball. It's a solenoid. Uh, that they put up against the wood and when you would score an extra ball or a special in pinball, it would fire off that solenoid so this, you know, fucking piece of metal would go slamming into the it would just crack, wood. Like pneumatically? And, yep, and pneumatically knock on the wood. So in Cubert, when you fall off the... Uh, the side, um, there's a delay, and then you hear a knock in the bottom of the cam cabinet, like, like Hubert fell, fell off. That's the adorable. It, it's hilarious. It's awesome, um, and it's in the replicate cabinet. That's fantastic. that's the main reason I wanted to bring it up. Um, it's it's the stupid attention to detail like that that takes me from being like, okay, they're neat, but I don't need to talk about it. To uh, that's the sort of shit that makes people spend the money on these. Yeah, and this is why you know it's um, let's see, 130 for the regular one, 150 if you want the the uh, Warren Davis one, or both for two seventy five, and it's like eh, if you're into this, you know we have a, we have a crazy friend who loves all things Cubert. He got on board, both yep. of them. So it's like I understand that, 
Um, I, I totally understand that what these are for. We've gone through them a few times, and yeah, these aren't again. These aren't the fucking twenty dollars pieces of crap in Target. No, and I, I know, and like uh, I own one. Um, someone I, I I talked about it on the podcast, but after we covered the Dragons Lair one, someone very kindly offered to send me theirs. They were moving. They realized they didn't need it. They sent it to me, and as I, this that, is not something no I would have gone. Really needs this stuff, but yeah, uh, yeah. I I would not have gone out of my way to buy one, but now that I have one, believe me, I get it. They really are stupidly nice you get a protector sleeve for the little mini laser disc you put a little, little mini <laughs> put in your yeah, yeah, it's in the little mini disc laser play, laser disc player um so yeah they're nice if this is something that does appeal to you i i, I can and this is not an ad i can say they're really fucking nice so that, so oh so it wasn't a phone thing for the led there's actually a separate led thing on the dragon's layer on the front it, it, it's it's an i mean i'm sure it's just one led that they space the numbers out on but it's got the actual like brackets and everything so it looks like all the separated okay scoreboard that's pretty cool yeah it's really awesome did you beat it on that no uh yes oh you did yeah. oh okay he's not good at cubert but he's good at dragon's lair that's you know ian i still get surprised at ian every every week on the podcast i learned new things i uh, i spent like two weeks playing it on the replicate specifically just to beat it on You're the like replicate. Going, yeah joystick's nice and nice and clicky yeah yeah, it little, works. A little nice. micro switch on there. Well, nice. that's good. Well, Ian, after you after you uh, play your Dragon's Lair, you can go to the Nintendo Cafe for a nice drink. You can relax. So, according to uh, IGN, um, a secret Nintendo Cafe in Japan is open to the public for the first time. It was previously only for video game developers. Now open to bookings for anyone. Uh, reported by Bloomberg, the cafe known as Eighty Four is owned and operated by ex Nintendo employee. Toru Hashimoto, and was created as a members-only cafe for video game developers. A cafe located in Shibuya at a still-secret address has been forced to reevaluate its operating model as a result of the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and is now taking reservations and customers from outside the industry. Huh. It's like a speakeasy for, for, for Nintendo speakeasy. This is, this is so <laughs> weird. Um, Hashimoto originally wanted 84 to be a place for Nintendo's game devs to relax in a video game themed environment that wasn't in the company offices. It's still very, it still very much retains a Nintendo focus, however, with art and doodles from various Nintendo games framed on the walls. Wow. And a Legend of Zelda jingle playing as you walk through the door. <laughs> probably, probably the secret mm -hmm. you know, when, you get, yeah. when you get an item. Uh, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's cute. 84 comes from the year Hashimoto joined Nintendo. That makes sense. I was thinking about that. And many of the items and decorations in the cafe are related to his time there. Uh, he left Nintendo in 2000, excuse me, in 95 and opened the cafe uh, 10 years later in 2015. That's tw 20 years. Okay, that's their, their pat math is off there. Apparently, he opened the cafe exclusively for friends because he didn't have much experience in the hospitality business. Wow. So um, that's really awesome. Yeah. It's so like, oh, this is, I, I used to work at Nintendo. I'm opening a cafe. I'm catering to people I love in, in the industry and... Stay out of you, dirt, you dirty humanoids out there. It's just for, for video game people. It's fantastic. But then I'll be opened up to uh, a wider audience. This is like that fucking, uh, this reminds me of that weird uh, secret Disney thing. Club 33. Yeah, where it's like you got to like. I think it's 33. You can't get into it easily. You need to be a member and you get the best. I have a friend food. who's been on a wait list for 10 years. But it's it's like the employees. I think the wait list is something like insane. It's for like the employees, but also like the, it's for like celebrities and and for like people that pay money. It's it's like a, it's like a twenty five thousand dollar a year membership. Yeah, not hundred thousand a year membership. It's very expensive. This reminds me of that, but this isn't like you know through the nose ridiculous. You know that's just like well that's like just you know sh showing off how much money you have to be able to say like oh I can eat exclusively in, in the freaking back lot of Disney somewhere. You know, which I'm sure the food is great. I'm sure. I'm sure. It's not a back lot. It's tucked oh. away in the park. Oh, I mean, that's you right. can actually walk by the door if you know where to look. It's I believe it's in the French Quarter, the fake French Quarter. Sure. You know what I mean, though. It's like sure. Is that amazing though? And, and then you go in there, and it's like I guess ritzy and glamorous, and you dress up. You'll see Don Cheadle in there, talking about his Emmy nomination for two minutes of work on Falcon and Winter Soldier. That was announced today. It was it was just funny. Pat's Pat's been on this. All it's, it's, it's it's so strange. It's like it's like I don't want to say someone's paid off, but for someone was paid off. It's fine. That. It's fine. Give I Don love, the kudos. I loved no. I, yes, I love Don Cheadle. Hotel Rwanda was amazing. He did not act. He did not act in Falcon Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Sorry, what was I talking about? Uh, Red Dead Edutainment is where we're going next. Uh, and I was going to maybe pass over this one, but no, no, this is actually very interesting. No, I find see, this, see, this is very you, neat. You wanted to not do an intro, basically. Hey, 
I wasn't the one who said we needed to get rid of things. Um, so Red oh, Dead wow. Redemption 2, uh, when it came out, was known for uh, having realistic animal behavior. And if you've ever talked to people who have played Red Dead 1 or 2, they talk about how like the hunting and the animal behavior is pretty impressive. Um, and, you know, it, it's you know like tracking the animals and stuff like that is difficult. Um, mm. So a, uh, a paper published by the People in Nature Journal... Um, I'm, a, I'm a member of that, by the way. I get a subscription. Do you? No, yeah, absolutely. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like I like learn about beaver behaviors. Ian. Well, no, I mean I like read books and stuff on that. So I, you you could be the sort of okay. person who does that. No, I, I lots I, of no, people I have love, interesting I lo- interests. I love critters. Um, so it, it tasked players who had played either Red Dead Redemption Two or Red Dead Online. Um, or it, it, it showed that players who'd played Red Dead Redemption 2 or Red Dead Online were better at identifying real-life animals than those who hadn't. Uh, this is directly from the PCGamer.com article. The study asked over 500 self-selected gamers to name specific animals, first with a blank text field and then with multiple choice. The researchers left out charismatic megafauna like wolves or bears, opting for creatures like the little egret and the steelhead trout. Um, oh, wow. The, so they didn't go for obvious answers like can you do what kind of bear is this no yeah. no they went for the weird shit that how is many in animals the game. are in this game i'm gonna look that up I, I that i honestly don't know um players who had finished red dead redemption 2's main story or taken a naturalist role in red dead online were notably better at identifying the animals those who hadn't played either and those outside of north america there's 178 animals in yeah, this game did less well wow so that's it's just it's an interesting list. study. You know, edutainment seems to be unpopular. I th- I love edutainment. There's three, I wish there was more edutainment. There's three different type of hawks in this game. Yeah. I mean, wow, they did their research. But, you know, uh, you can learn shit from video games as long as it's implemented in the video games yeah. correctly. People who play a game like Red Dead Redemption, you know, most people I know who played the game at minimum played it for 40 hours. Oh, I know a lot of people who put like over 100 hours in. You're absorbing this information. So yeah. if the yes. animal, so if the animals look and act accurate in the game, you're going to learn something from it. And I think that's pretty neat. This is amazing. hundred. I would have said, oh, there's like 50 animals. There's 178. Um, it's crazy. Can I kill poachers and people that are like trying to kill, wipe out the bison in this game? Is that something I can oh, do? No. I'll, I'll play if the game so, tomorrow. I'll play it. I was yeah. going to say. I'll, play it. I'll go home is that, play is that like a mode? <laughs> is that a mode? In it? I'll, can I start like my own little zoo? And like, what is this, 1890 or 1880? Whatever this is. Can I start, the, start like a zoo and like protect like the bison? I'll be like the guy from the future that knows that the bison are going to be wiped out in the fucking continent. Just about. Can I be that guy uh, uh, to do that? Uh, you can interrogate poachers in Red Red Redemption too. There's apparently interrogate. A, there's apparently a quest given by Charles Smith. Uh, upon noticing several poached bison that have not been made use of, Charles decides to track down the poachers. Yes. After that, yes. Arthur can kill the poacher or let him go. I would. Uh, kill I'm, the I'm in. I want. But I want that as. I want that like as a main story arc in my game. I want. Yeah. One of the best, uh, one of the better Google 13 stories, and they're all great, is um, he's hired. And this is my dream. Um, some assholes in, in Africa, poachers, just wipe out a whole family herd of elephant for the, for the tusks. And it's someone you know that works for the you know the wildlife people. It's like they they hire him, and boy does he take them out. And it's like it's the it's like the most feel good story you've ever read of a Google 13 story where he just systematically takes out. This band of machine gunning. They machine gun the elephants from like, you know, from like helicopters and stuff and just gun them all down. And boy, does he, does he, does he put his work in? Good old Duke Togo. Feel good story is that taking out fucking poachers. Don't, don't, don't ever make me a billionaire somehow or don't, don't give me that money. You give me that Je- Jeff Bezos money. I ain't going to space, Ian. I ain't doing that. I'm, I'm putting it to work on Earth. I'll just say that. You don't, you don't want me with that sort of influence and power. Sorry, what were we talking about? Poacher Down is the world's first anti-poaching game and the first ever oh. FPS game in Afrikaans and Zulu. Proudly designed in South Africa. Okay. You can kill poachers. Okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna do ads for free for this one. Uh, do do any proceeds go towards any anti-poacher agencies? Like, can I buy this? I'm finding out right now. I'm trying uh, to find out right now. <laughs> People also ask, can you kill poachers on site? <laughs> yes, if somebody's got, yes, they do. They just shoot them. Uh, yes. 100% of the proceeds go to uh, 
100% of all donations for the game go directly to the Rhino Pride Foundation. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. They're starting to use dr uh, drones as an anti-poaching measure in Ka Kaziranga. Not sure where that is. So, yeah, put mount fucking guns and missiles and take out the poachers on that. This game looks a little dated, but I would play it. Okay. All right. Uh, PS4. PS4 Pros were found in a warehouse, Ian. Mining <laughs> this Bitcoin! Is, this, is, this is an all-over-the-place intro, but I like it. I like this style. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. We're, we're, we're nowhere and everywhere. Uh, thousands of PS4 Pros discovered in a warehouse raid, and somehow it wasn't the noise that gave them away. This is from Ethan Gock. <laughs> Uh, UK Ukraine security service busted a cryptocurrency mining farm filled with racks of PS4 Pros for allegedly stealing electricity off the nation's grid, the spy agency reported last week. Um, discovered more than 5,000 devices, including racks and racks of PS4 Pros and other gaming-related tech in a warehouse next door to... Wow, I'm not be able to say this. Vinny Sh Shiobo Nurg... Wow. Vinny Shablnurgle Energy Distribution Company in the city of Vinny, Vinny uh, The agency had accused the operation of leaching as much as $256,640 worth of energy from the surrounding grid using special electrical meters to hide the theft. It wasn't ruled out that... Uh, it wasn't ruled out involved by officials of the power company located right next to the warehouse. Oh, wait. The power company was right next to the warehouse and they didn't know? There's, there's some shenanigans going on here, Ian. Mm-hmm. They're literally next to the... And they didn't know how much energy they were using. Some countries like Iran have banned crypto mining altogether due to energy blackouts. China has really come down on it the past uh, months about it because it's fucking oh, things yeah? up. Oh, yeah. It's fucking things up for energy. Of course it is. Don't send me an email saying, oh, no, by this year, this amount of Bitcoin. Fuck off. It's fucking We talked about this when we talked about the up. NFT. People in, in cryptocurrency have been saying clean is coming for six years, if not longer. When, it, when, when, when clean finally this, comes, when it has its big O face, you let me know that it's here. This, this is a lip, crypto and, and things like that and blockchain have, are like eliminating green energy gains in a lot of places. That's the bottom line. It's, it's, it's bad. Um, Vinny Shablo Nurgo des denies any involvement. The equipment used for cryptocurrency mining has never operated on premises owned by our enterprise, they said in a July 9th statement. Yeah, but they're like next door doing it. Like, come, come on. I, I love how this stuff happens. Somebody's got, it's like, they're next door, but we're, we don't know anything about it. But they're like, they're next door. And we, get, and we have lunch with the guys, maybe. <laughs> but like, we, you know, like <laughs> come on. There's, there's, there might be some kickbacks going on there. Allegedly, don't come after me. But oh, they're on the U Ukrainian authorities. I think that's funny as hell. Right, is, that, is that it for the intro? That's it for the intro. That's that it? Yeah. 